Good morning. Buenos dias. Thank you for the invitation to be here. It's a blessing to me to be here, especially because maybe you don't know, but Pastor Evie was my mentor in the process for ordination. So she's special to me, my family, and everybody, and thank you. I'm really glad to be here. So you have been with the Star Over Series sermons, and I watched them online, the two before sermons. So Ruth's story is significant to my life. 14 years ago, I had to emigrate from El Salvador and come to Wisconsin with my husband's family. A month later, the Missouri Conference sought pastors to open a Hispanic ministry in San Luis. My husband and I moved to Missouri, uncertain about what will happen in our lives. A new city, a new country, a different language, different culture, different food, sometimes discrimination, and worst of all, without cell phone and GPS at that time. We were afraid of the new, the unknown, the change, the uncertain, and the unlikely. I don't know how many times in your life you have had to start over. I don't know how often you have been in an unlikely place, as Pastor Evie shared in her sermon last week. Imagine the life of Naomi and Ruth. Naomi, her husband, and two sons moved from Bethlehem to the land of Moab because of famine. And Naomi's husband died there, and each of her sons married with a Moabite woman. After the death of her two sons, Naomi encouraged her daughters-in-law to return to live with their families, so that they could care for them. Ruth chose to stay with Naomi. They both returned to Bethlehem as an unprotected women because they were widows. In my experience, sorry, when you leave your country and go to another, Something interesting happened. And these women could send it. They sense it. When you are in a foreign country, don't do, they don't welcome you as one of their citizens. Sometimes they can hear like, come back to your country. And sometimes they are a little bit kind and say, now that your country is really good, when it's going to return to your home. And they see you as a second-class citizen. But when you return to your country, it's not different. They don't see you as a part of them either. And this text makes us think of the unlikely future that these two widows have. Like foreigners and orphans, widows receive significant attention in Israel law. As Moab, losing the protection and support of their husbands, they were easy targets for economic and social abuse and exploitation. You know, fear paralyzes. And the pain of the person our attitude, whether positive or negative, that we have toward the future, it's fundamental in life. Chapter 1 and 2, Naomi had a defeatist attitude when she arrived at her place and origin. And still, Ruth helped to change her perspective of the future because Ruth began to work to change their current situation. In chapter 3 and 4, we see another Naomi. Now it's different now. She is 
warming with hope, confidence, and faith that everything will change. And she also begins to work to improve her family life and those around her. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, Ruth chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 said, My daughter, should I not seek rest for you, that it may be well with you? It is not boss or relative with just young woman you were. See, he is nothing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Wash, therefore, and anoint yourself. Put on your clock and go down to the trusting floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. But when he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and cover his feet and lay down. And he will tell you what to do. And she replied, all that you say, I will do. We see a different Naomi. No longer tingle like Mara. But no, but with a hopeful, with still unlikely future. When we start over in any aspect of our life, we must always be positive, have hope, take risks. And know that God is walking with us. When one door closes, that has happened to me almost all the time. When one door closed, it is because God is opening 10 more. Don't be afraid. My grandparents always said, Elsie, you must always try. And I was so, oh, my. Grandpa, I think it's okay in that way. And he said, no, you need always try. You must take risk. You must ask. And the only bad thing that they can happen is that they say no. But even without answer, never give up. Once again, necessity drove Naomi beyond Conventions bound by inciting the courtship between Boaz and Ruth. And verse 7, the chapter 3 said, And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lay down at the end of the heap of grain. And then she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay down. Naomi sent Ruth to the threshing floor of Boaz during the night to uncover her feet and lay down. Despite the meaning of feet in Ruth, we could be a sexual euphemism. And Naomi's strategy was suspect from the perspective of the customs and morality and was very dangerous. Ruth's preparation and location for the encounter seems to indicate the action of a prostitute. And under normal circumstances, if a self-respecting, a morally noble man like Boaz, sleeping in the treasure field, were to awake at the midnight and discover a woman beside him, he could badly and for sure cast her out, asserting that he had not business with women like her. Ruth requests that boss marry her, was bold from the perspective of customs. And a foreigner make overtures to an Israelite, a woman making overtures to a man, a young girl making overtures to an older person, a landless labor making overtures to wealthy land owner. However, instead of being 
offended by Ruth's audacity. Let's see what happened in verse, in chapter 3, verses 10 to 13. And he said, may you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than the first because you have not gone after young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you ask. For all my fellow citizens know that you are the worthy woman. And now it is true that I am the redeemer yet. Yet there is a redeemer neither than I. Remain tonight and in the morning. If we will redeem you, good. Let him do it. But if he is not willing to redeem you, then as the Lord's life, I will redeem you. Lay down until the morning. Boaz bless her, praise her for her commitment with her family's welfare. Call her, call her my daughter. Precious her not to fear. Promise to do what she asks and declare her an honorable woman. This extraordinary reaction is attributed to the inspiration of God that filled her heart. And as we watch the story of these two women, it shows us how to loving and caring attitude of one of them changed the whole environment. Giving them the hope and peace that they needed. We can be agents of transformation for others and receive from others when we need also a word of hope, peace, a hug, encouragement, and direction. You can do something for others. You can some, do something different. And sometimes we like to give, right? We as a pastor, we have all the time we want to give, but sometimes we need receiving also. Following Naomi's instructions, Ruth asked Boaz to marry her. Boaz followed well the procedures of the love of Moses and first invited a close relative to fulfill his duty to marry Ruth. But after the relative refused, Boaz married Ruth. They had a son named Obed, who will become, hear this, the grandfather of King David. Start over. The story, the whole story changed. What will happen if Ruth had not listened to Naomi? What would ha have happened if Naomi and Ruth had never taken the risk? Naomi could have spent her whole life regretting it. Oh, this is so bad to me. If they would never have been redeemed, if at that time they didn't change their lives, if they didn't trust in God, they will never have been redeemed and their future would have been different. I don't know what you have been facing these days. Possible you have been afraid of what is coming this new year or in the future. What decisions are you making now and for what purpose? The teaching of the whole book of Ruth is faithfulness. God is faithful and is always with us. Or I'll say to Ruth, rest and see you tomorrow. God says to you today, rest, trust in me because I am with you. If you have fallen, don't give up. Get up and start over. If you have failed, start over. 
God is a God of second chances. God of grace. And always gives us the hope of a new beginning and a future by his side. I have a question for you this morning. We cannot write our future with certainty. But do we trust God to write it for us? Let us pray. God of Ruth and Naomi, open our eyes to see you at all times of life. May your Holy Spirit help us believe and trust that you are in control of our future. Thank you for your promises that you will be, you will be with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.